Welcome into another edition of the Coach Shinnick Show, where each week we like to break down what's happened with UWF football, <laughs> University of West Florida, and we're on the road again this week. Livingston, Alabama this time. We're smiling. Yes. So that, that, that's a tip-off that Coach Shinnick has picked up a win. 47-7 is our final score. We knew this was going to be a tough one uh, coming over here to play West Al last time you were here. Didn't turn out so well. Uh, always a tough place to play. No, it really is. And so I, I could not be happier with the outcome. And, uh, you know, I mean, for us to get started the way we did, uh, just extremely proud of our entire team, just how they played, came out and, you know, had an answer for everything that they wanted to do. And so, uh, you know, really fired up with this effort and to be in the position that we're in right now. Coach Pete Shinnick, if you know him, often says, in fact, all the time says, it's not who we play, it's how we play. And you've been saying if we come and we show up and we play our best football, and defensively especially, get off to a good start, dominate the game right from the get-go. They did that. Your defense came out, you win the coin toss, you kick off, and the defense goes and gets a three and out. And that they set a tone that they didn't let up on at all. No, it was huge. And the, the, the best defensive effort that we've seen from four quarters, obviously the defense pitched a shutout. They got seven points, but that was off an offensive turnover. Uh, but the defense pitched a shutout. And then uh, to really just stymie West Alabama's run game. I mean, one of the better run games in the conference. I think we held them under two yards of carry. That's unbelievable. Uh, uh, to be able to do and uh, could not be happier for our defense and what they did and how they did it. Defense gets that ball to your offense. The offense drives the field. It is Karan Ashley, 30 yard touchdown catch from Austin Reed. And you kind of knew it was going to be one of those days where a bunch of guys were going to be involved. The offense was clicking too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was a fourth down and um, it, it took about 12 seconds, I think, for that play. Austin scrambled around, moved around, and then Karan did a great job coming back for the ball and then found the end zone. That was that was a fun play, and I was like, okay, if this is the way it's going to go, this could be fun for us. You get another drive after the defense holds again. You're driving down, and this time you, you kind of stall out and forced to kick a field goal. But Griffin Sarah has been great. Yeah. Uh, punches one through from 26 yards. He's kind of automatic at this point, no, he's, except for the PAT. Well, the oh, PAT, I almost forgot. No, the PAT blocked. I don't know that that's on him. Uh, we had some penetration. We'll take a look at that. Um, but really, with with that being said, I mean, you, you know, in previous games, it's like, all right, do we go for it? Do we not? We I think we had fourth and four inside the 20. But, I mean, he, the way he's been kicking, it, there, there was no question that he was going to make it. You get David Durden back for this game. It's been a couple of weeks, and people maybe forget how dynamic this young man can be. Uh, you get an offensive possession where you go down, 16-yard pass to him. And it, really one of those situations where when he's inside of the – defensive back, all Austin has to do is put it near him. Well, I'll tell you, he made he made a couple of catches that were just fantastic, and then I, I, I think he, he didn't get credit for a catch that uh, uh, he made that was really good as well. He dropped one early, and he's like, I won't do that again. I was like, all right, good. Uh, and yeah, you, you forget how much of a dynamic player he is, uh, because we've got really good wide receivers. Uh, he, he brought his A game today and played at a very high level, and that was fun to watch. As Coach mentioned, you're bottling up their running game in Demetrius Battle. When they can Complete passes, you're getting guys on the ground right away, which I know is something you guys talked about during the week. You get another touchdown to Karan before the half, and then you add another one to Durden before the half from 22 yards. Those guys are going to the locker room, two touchdowns each. I think Austin had a whole game in the first half, 320-plus yards and four touchdowns. It looked like a, a full game's worth of work. No, he had – yeah, yeah he, he, he threw four touchdowns first half, and it was like, okay, this is, this is rolling the way it wants to. I think that touchdown right before the half was crucial uh, because it really did kind of – you know, put a little pressure on them as to where they were and what needed to take place. So, uh, you know, David David catching the ball, Karan catching the ball, uh, you know, and then, you know, Austin just does a great job of finding the open guy. And you saw that again. You know, he did a phenomenal job of that last week, and he did it again this week. It, it was great. You ran the first run, by the way, Shamari Mason goes for 30 yards on the first carry, and I think they, they realize we've, we've got to respect the run, opens up the pass. 30 to nothing at the half, and I thought you guys might score when you got the ball back with like 30 seconds or four. 40 seconds and a half as well. We will take a break. We'll come back and we'll look at an exciting second half where defensive touchdowns and all kinds of wild things were happening. Still plenty to come right here on the Coach Shinnick Show. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits.
For those who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind, and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Hello, I'm Zach Pullman. I'm a graduate assistant here at the University of West Florida and I work in athletic communications. When I found out that I received the Bright Future Scholarship, I knew this would take a burden off of my family and kind of help me through college. Given the opportunity to pay for my complete undergraduate degree, I did not have to worry about student debt. So I was able to continue my journey of education. Just want to thank the Florida Lottery for not only helping me through my college journey, but countless others in the state of Florida and all they do to help education within the state. Welcome back into the Coach Shinnick Show. When we left it off, it was 30 to nothing at half. Will Kennedy and Coach Pete Shinnick with you. And I know that that's really kind of feeling like, okay, we got, we got control of this one. And I kind of said on the radio broadcast, we've been not quite that bad, but on the other end of that a little bit. So you know West Al is going to go in and try to make some adjustments. But it really felt like they're not a team that's built to throw the football to try to catch up in a game. They like to run it too much. And I think that played out in the second half somewhat. No, it did. And they're, you know, they, they are so good at their RPO game. And they're so good at handing off. I mean, they balance themselves uh, amazingly uh, with that. And so the, the impressive part part of what we did defensively has really made them one-dimensional. Uh, and then I don't know that they had the passing game, the capacity to you know score that many points. So uh, to come out and for us to take the opening drive, uh, kick a long field goal, that was good to be able to get that on the boards. Uh, and then our defense, again, just was fantastic. Uh, and I felt like, you know, I, I think we started milking the clock about, you know, with about four minutes to go in the third quarter because I was like, we get the 40 by the fourth, I'll, I'll feel good about this thing. You mentioned Griffin Sarah, he knocks on a 43-yarder, and the wind had kind of picked up at that point. That's a good length of kick, and I think it speaks volumes to whether it's Valdosta next week or on and into the playoffs having somebody you can trust from that range. No doubt, and I, I think those those six points there that he got were crucial uh, in what we're trying to do and you know moving forward. And you always want to be able to say, all right, we get stopped down there, we don't like to, how are we going to get points, what's it going to look like? Uh, really proud of him and how he's come on. He's doing a great job. With West Alabama having to kind of throw the football, your defense is able to, as they say, pin the ears back and yeah. come after Jack McDaniels. They did a great job, five sacks in the game. He had nine tackles for losses, forced some turnovers along the way. We'll get to a big one of those in a second. Second, but they really felt like once they were able to impose their will and really get after the quarterback, they did a great job. Yeah, I love what we were doing pressure-wise, bringing some guys on the inside, bringing some guys on the outside. Uh, you know, he escaped the pocket early, and you just got to go, okay, that's going to happen a couple times. Uh, but then we, we started going, and, uh, you know, DeMarco Artis, I think, you know, got in there a couple times, really looked good, and then we rotated, a, you know, a ton of D linemen, and they were just getting pushed and getting in the way. You know, and the tip balls, too, I thought were crucial crucial to our success. Marcus Clayton, I thought, played a good game at corner as well. You had a bunch of guys. We can go yeah. down the list of names. No, Marcus, you know, Marcus said last night in our team meeting, you know, he, he, hey, he didn't play well against these guys back in 2019. He wanted to play well tonight, and, and he played phenomenal. I mean, he really took what everybody considers the best wide receiver in the conference uh, and really uh, limited him to his, you know, to how many yards he got. My broadcast partner, Jamie Smith, on the radio said, you know, back in a couple years ago, Anthony Johnson came here in 2017 and kind of put his imprint on this place in the playoffs. He did that again today. He really ran well. I think 12 carries, 50-plus yards, and imposed his will. He punched it in on a touchdown that got you to that 40-point mark, right. and, and that was one of those drives a little bit different than the way you've been doing it. You were able to run it a little more. more. <laughs> yeah, bang away a little bit. They were giving us eight-man boxes, seven-man boxes, going in different directions. Uh, again, Austin does a great job with the RPO, seeing where he needs to be. Uh, but Ant Johnson, and we, it's funny, it's one of the things we talked about in the team meeting uh, last night as well. Ant Johnson here, uh, West Alabama. He does a fantastic job, and um, you know I, I couldn't be happy again for him, senior, super senior, sticking around, uh, being a part of this, and to be able to score. He, he's been great. We got a very good one-two punch going uh, with those two guys. Uh, Shamari continues to average over 10 yards a carry the last couple of weeks, so uh, it's exciting football. Getting to the fourth quarter, a couple crazy things. Austin throws an interception on a ball. I think it may have been tipped there. Yep. There's a fumble when you get your second offense in there. They return it for a long touchdown return. And then the defense really, I mean, kind of encapsules the whole game. They get to the quarterback, force him to throw a ball up in the air. De'Anthony Bell catches it. 
and I swear, he's looking for people to run into at one point during the return. 90 <laughs> yards for a touchdown. Well, I'm saying go wide, go wide, go wide, because that's what the defense teaches. That's how we do it. And sure enough, he runs, you know, into people up the hash. And then all of a sudden, I was like, oh, my gosh, he may score. People kept falling off of him. Then I'm like, ah, oh, somebody's going to – no, okay, that's a 90-yard interception return. Great day for him. Very excited for him. 47-7 the final score, reversing kind of what happened here back in 2018 and really setting you up 8-1 and one now, 5-1 and one in conference play. Valdosta next week. We'll talk more about them in the show, but you're at a point where everything to play for, GSC title, rankings in the, you know, in the regionals to go on into the playoffs, and it all came from here today. No, I did. We, we, had to, we had to take care of business today. Could not be prouder of how we played. Uh, our guys flat out got after it. Uh, this is a statement game as to, you know, what, what our future can be. Uh, we got to be able to answer the call every week now from here on out. We know we're in playoff mode, so uh, very happy to play the way we did. It'll be huge next Saturday, Blue Wahoo Stadium at 4 o'clock. Coach will be back a little bit later in the show to break down that matchup with Valdosta. Coming up next, Maya dives, dives into the other fall sports, Gulf South Conference tournament stuff around the corner. Volleyball continues to roll right here on the Coach Shinnick Show. What does Argo spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Look at that. That's called a takes two hands burger. Fresh 100% beef stacked high with melted cheese, hand chopped veggies, and everything else you could possibly ask for. Yep, that's your Whataburger, made exactly the way you want it. Because sometimes you gotta take matters into your own hands. What a burger, just like you like it. who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Welcome back. It was another great week to be a UWF Athletics fan. Football went on the road and defeated West Alabama. D'Anthony Bell was named GSC Defensive Player of the Week. This week, football will be back at home for the final home game of the season and play Valdosta State. And volleyball went on the road to Mississippi College in West Alabama and swept both teams in three sets. Maddie Cooler was named GSC Offensive Player of the Week. Volleyball secured the number one seed and will be hosting the GSC Volleyball Championship the 19th through the 21st right here in the UWF Fieldhouse. Women's soccer opened up the first round of the GSC Championship Tournament on the road against Valdosta State and defeated the Lady Blazers 1-0. Payton Peppers was named to the GSC All-Conference second team and Blair Cohen was named to the GSC All-Conference first team. I can say it's great coaching, but it's not true. <laughs> it's uh, the players uh, doing their job again. They're understanding their roles. We've, we've worked on it in training, and, and they've bought in. And since they understand their roles from the front runners all the way through the midfield and the defenders and the keepers, uh, they are limiting the other team's shot count, and, uh, and that helps you know, lead to hopefully some, you know, some shutouts. Lee's very good. They have a very veteran team. We just have to focus on ourselves and, and what we need to, to accomplish uh, from the beginning of the game all the way uh, throughout the entire match. Men's soccer also opened up the GSC Championship Tournament and they hosted Christian Brothers and won 4-2. to two. Keegan Anselin, Ed Chappie, and Kynan Dos Santos were named to the GSC All-Conference First Team and Keegan Anselin was named GSC Freshman of the Year. We've started to control the tempo of the games and control the ball more than we did earlier in the year. So. We were getting wins early in the year, but we didn't have as much control over the games. And so that, that transformation in our team has been really good to see, especially the fact that we're a young team and a lot of these guys are going to be around for years to come. It's going to be a big challenge uh, because we are very inexperienced and AUM is on the other side of that. They're extremely experienced. 15 or 16 seniors, something like that. Um, extremely determined team. 
one of the most difficult teams to play against uh, probably in the NCAA. It, it's really not technical or tactical in terms of our challenge this week. It's mental preparation and can we stand up to the physical challenge that we're going to be up against and the emotional chaos that will be created around a tournament environment playing against a bunch of seniors. The remainder of the GSE Soccer Championship Tournament will be held here in Pensacola at Ashton Brotheningham Park. Women's soccer will play Thursday at 6 p.m. against Lee. Be sure to check GoArgos.com for all the latest updates on that game. Men's soccer will be back in action on Friday against AUM at 6 p.m. For the latest updates on that game, be sure to check GoArgos.com as well. Both men and women's cross country travel down to St. Leo for the South Region Cross Country Championship. Alyssa Granberg and Zach Vinton had great finishes. This does conclude the cross country season. Men's basketball will open up their seasons this weekend, Friday against Fort Valley State University and on Saturday against Clark Atlanta University. Women's basketball opens up their season on the road at Valdosta against Benedict and Palm Beach Atlantic University. For all the latest information on UWF athletics, be sure to visit GoArgos.com, follow GoArgos on Instagram and Twitter, or download the Argo Armada app. We'll talk to Hannah Wooten right after this. What does Argo spirit look like? Is it finding the perfect Argo outfit to show your team pride? Is it giving back while getting your pre-game grub? Or is it connecting with your community in the perfect spot? At Penn Air Federal Credit Union, it's being a proud sponsor of UWF Education, the Alumni Association, Athletics, Penn Air Field, and having a spirit of communerosity. Learn more at pennair.org slash about us. Real change occurs in that split second a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose. A shared vision. And a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. Hello, I'm Zach Pullman. I'm a graduate assistant here at the University of West Florida and I work in athletic communications. When I found out that I received the Bright Future Scholarship, I knew this would take a burden off of my family and kind of help me through college. Given the opportunity to pay for my complete undergraduate degree, I did not have to worry about student debt. So I was able to continue my journey of education. Just want to thank the Florida Lottery for not only helping me through my college journey, but countless others in the state of Florida and all they do to help education within the state. Welcome back to the Coach Shinnick Show. We're here with Hannah Wooten from Women's Soccer. Hannah, how are you? I'm good. Okay, so you have been here for five seasons now, and you're coming to the end of your career here. What has your experience been like? Uh, there's been a lot of ups and downs. It's uh, been rough, but at the same time, it's been very eye-opening and a lot of lessons learned. Um, but overall, it's just been a really fun time and a great experience with all the girls. I've made memories that I'll never forget, so... So this season, you guys have definitely progressed throughout the course of the season, just getting better, and the team chemistry has gotten better throughout the season. So what do you think has been the driving force this season to make you guys so successful? I think team chemistry is like a big driving force for us. Um, in soccer teams, it's a, that's a big thing because it's so much teamwork, and if you don't trust your teammates, it just goes downhill from there. So like... Team chemistry this year has been amazing, and I think that's our biggest thing that's holding us together and making us just want to work for each other on the field. So personally, you have played over 5,000 minutes throughout your time here. Looking back at it, what has been your greatest memory? Ooh, that's a really hard question. Probably winning a conference championship in 2018. That was just so much fun. And that team that year was just same thing. The team chemistry was just great. Those are some of my like good friends that I'll never not talk to, you know? So that year was just great to win with our like great friends. So looking back to when you first came here, what kind of made your decision final? Like, I want to come to West Florida and play soccer here. Well, I liked the beaches, so that was cool. Um, and honestly, the team has a great track record. I mean, we've always been a very winning team so I think that was a big part too because I like to win. <laughs> so what advice would you give to the younger version of yourself coming into college knowing what you know now? Don't be so distracted by outside things. Really only school and soccer matter. Most other things are just temporary <laughs> so stay focused on what does matter. 
And then as a leader, how has your mindset just changed throughout like your freshman year to now being a leader on the team and people and someone who people look up to? Definitely become more responsible <laughs> compared to when I was a freshman. Um, I'm not late to things anymore. And just kind of always trying to be there for everybody and making sure everybody's on the same page and feeling good and wanting to be on the team and wanting to play. And I think that's the biggest thing is just making sure everybody is on the same page, wanting to work hard for each other. So as the season kind of gets into postseason, you guys won against Valdosta and you're looking to keep going. What is your mindset just to looking to keep this season going as long as you can? I think we just really need to give it our all. I think like if we give it our all, the way we played against Mississippi College, Valdosta, I think we can beat any team. But it just requires everybody to give it their all. And I mean, we've seen that we can do it. So but we just need to keep that momentum going is the biggest thing. So lastly, what advice would you give to anyone who's looking to get started playing soccer? Or maybe they're going to go play soccer at the collegiate level. Focus on technical skills, probably, and focus on being a good teammate. That's the biggest thing, I think, for soccer. Technical skills and being a good teammate, always being able to pressure, cover, balance. <laughs> Thank you so much, Hannah, for joining us. We'll be right back with the Coach Shannon Show. Real change occurs in that split second, a moment of connection among people. With a common purpose, a shared vision, and a unified goal. What will you change? What will change you? The University of West Florida. No limits. Look at that. Your Whataburger made exactly the way you want it. Because sometimes you got to take matters into your own hands. What a burger. Just like you like it. For those who measure success by the worn tread on their tires, and those who strengthen their body and mind and drift through their weekends over nature's curve. Andrews Institute, for those who move. Welcome back into our final segment here of the Coach Shinnick Show. Coach Pete Shinnick back with us now. We're ready to talk about Valdosta. It's finally here. I think this is uh, one of those times in sports where everyone points to something that's going to happen near the end of the season. And sometimes it, things just don't live up to the hype or things go sideways along the way. We predicted this game would be a big one yeah. at the end of the year. And here it is, Valdosta unbeaten. You guys sitting there at 8-1, and one, conference is on the line. Yeah, I mean, we when we looked at the schedule when it came out, we said, okay, this one will be for pretty much everything. Who's going to be the conference champion? Uh, obviously, we stumbled against uh, West Georgia. They've stayed uh, unbeaten, but it's still, if we beat them, we got an opportunity to share the conference title and feel very good about what we've been able to accomplish. You know, the GSC, we say it, you never know what will happen week from week. You're always going to get everybody's best. You guys go out and we handle West uh, Alabama fairly effectively, 47-7. to now, Austin struggles a little with North yeah. Greenville. I mean, they were in front the whole way, more or less, but, you know, not probably what a lot of people expected. What do you expect from this game? Is this going to be one where it's up and down and points all over the place, or is this maybe a defensive battle? Yeah, I, I, I have no idea. And, I mean, I think that's the beauty of it. I think that's the beauty of the matchups. You know, I think both our games uh, in 2019 were really classic games. They won the first one. We won the second one. Uh, but they were really, you know, kind of different uh, in how they played out and uh, really some really good halves by both teams there. Uh, and we found a way to win in the playoffs, and they found found a way to win in the regular season. So, uh, you know, looking at it, I mean, their defense is very good. Their offense is very good. Uh, our defense is playing very good right now. Uh, our offense is very good. So this one could go a lot of directions. This is interesting. When you look at Valdosta's defense, we'll start there. They, they give up some yardage on the ground to the running game. They're very stingy against the pass, which – that, that, that's it. It'll be an interesting matchup of strengths. Yeah, and we've, I think we faced a couple teams very similar to this. I think when West Georgia, when we played them, they were giving up 110 yards passing a game. And uh, so Valdosta, very similar. And, uh, you know, for us, it's really just finding the right matchups. 
Uh, again, our, our philosophy offensively is take what the defense gives you. Uh, Austin Reed runs that about as well as anybody that you know I've had doing it. So uh, we feel like there's a void somewhere. We're going to find it. And if there's a gap, we're going to look for it. Uh, love how we're running the ball. Uh, Shamari Mason leads the nation in yards per carry. So uh, love what he's able to do. And Anthony Johnson Jr. has just come on strong the last three weeks, running as well as I've ever seen him run in his career. Top two running backs, I think, in the conference statistically will be there. They've got a great one in Seth McGill. We, we know guys like Brian Sons, their receivers. So these are guys that you've seen for a long time. It is a little bit different at quarterback. No more Rogan Wells. Ivory Dunham finally gets his opportunity. Yeah, and Ivory, I mean, we knew he was electric. Heck, he'd play five, six plays here or there uh, when Rogan was the starter, and now he's the guy, uh, and he's just as electric. I mean, he is as good an athlete as I think there is uh, in the conference and really runs the offense very well and makes it a very difficult, you know, guy to contain because he's, you know, he's, he's had games where he's been extremely hot at quarterback and throwing the ball all over the place. Uh, and, again, he runs as well as anybody out there. You put him with the two backs, uh, it's an explosive offense. One thing that jumps out from the stats is you look at them and it's the long, you know, their long plays of the season. It's 50 and 60-yard runs and 50 and 60-yard passes. They, they really look for the big play. And we'll remember that from the regular season matchup <laughs> in 2019. They look to go over the top and they look to get those running backs into space. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna do as good a job as anybody is finding a way to get there athletes, uh, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, finding a way to get them in the right position. Uh, we've seen that over the course of almost every time that we've played them. Uh, extremely explosive on offense. Uh, I think, you know, when we've had success against them, we've kind of kept everything in front of us uh, and done a great job rallying and tackling. It is in the margins of these games. As you mentioned, it was. It was so close in 2019, both of the matchups, regular season and the playoffs. Is it, is it a special teams kind of game? You know, field position, we saw that with sure. you know, being able to use the punting game to, to manipulate field position. All those little things will come into play. Well, it is. And five yards here, five yards there is going to determine, you know, who gets the ball, where they get it, what it looks like. Uh, if we can win the field position battle, which is something that we talk about a lot, that's going to set us up uh, with the way we're kicking now, field goal-wise, feel very good about you know, the opportunity if we can get close to score. So um, I think every aspect of this, you know, Brian returns punts for him as well. He's explosive in that. we got to be able to contain every aspect of them across the board, no matter what team we have on the field, forces, uh, offense, defense. we, we got to be able to keep them at bay. This feels like a titanic <laughs> struggle is going to take place at Blue Wahoo Stadium. Four o'clock kick for the game. By the way, DeAnthony Bell, 90-yard interception return to the house, the pick six. He is the GSC Defensive Player of the Week. We'll be on the radio with the pregame show starting at 3.30. This game will be on Flow Sports, our, our streaming partner with the GSC, and also on your view on your TV sets as well. It's salute to service game, which I know is always a big one, but also senior day, you get to honor some of these guys that have been around a while and have done a lot for this program. No, i got a got a really big senior class, and uh, some guys like Rodney Coates and uh, Trent Archie have been with us really from the beginning. Uh, so sad to see their time come to an end, but, man, extremely appreciative for what they've been able to do to the pro for the program. And we got about 25, 26 of them that I think we're going to be honoring, so it's going to be a great day for them. That's Saturday selection show for the playoffs on Sunday. We'll have that for you on social media as well. Remember, GoArgos.com is always your spot to get the latest on UWF Athletics and the Argo Armada app right there in your pocket. Keep track of Coach Shinnick and his cooking recipes or whatever else yeah. he comes up with that we want to put Good on social that. media as well. And we will see you down the road right here on the Coach Shinnick Show.